Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to my lecture series on landlord and tenant valuations. Today I would like to discuss on lease surrender and renewal and how to value the rent for the new lease. This is my lecture outline mainly on the definition of the surrender and renewal, reason for the surrender and renewal, benefits to landlord, valuation approaches, case study examples. A surrender and renewal is about the tenant request to surrender the existing lease back to the landlord before the expiry of the term in return for the grant of a new lease of the same property. This is a voluntary arrangement. All right. The term of the agreement must be mutually acceptable by both landlord and tenants. The landlord may take the opportunity to revise the rent and terms of the occupation within the new lease. There are many reasons for lease surrender and renewals. Okay, the first reason is for the lease security. Tenant would seek for surrender and renewal when the existing unexpired term of lease offers insufficient security due to that the tenant has carried out substantial improvements to the property. Second, on finance security, tenant would seek to raise finance using lease interest as collateral to funding institutions. The third one is a business security. The tenant would seek to sublease his interest value to the subtenants, which would be enhanced by longer unexpired term lease. There are many benefits to the landlord of the lease surrender and renewal. The most beneficial to the landlord is an increment in the rental value, a premium payment, property improvements, and a good landlord tenant relations. Now we go to the valuation approaches. There are many approaches to the valuation to derive what will be the new rent for the lease renewal but the most common and popular is the basic calculation about in equal position either at before or after lease arrangements this calculation of a new rent for lease renewal could be derived based on the following formula which is tenants present interest equal to the tenants proposed interest landlord's present interest equal to the landlord's proposed interest so the, this equation will derive and determine what would be a new rent for lease renewal which is acceptable by both landlord and tenant so we go to the case study example one. The question is about a tenant occupies premise on a 21-year lease with two years unexpired at RM 15,000 per annum. Okay. The tenant wishes to surrender this lease for a new lease for 15 years with five-year reviews every five years all right so the market value terms for 15 years with five year reviews is rm 30,000 per annum so the existing lease of the 25 years will be expired soon which still have two years unexpired all right so the remaining lease is uh, about two years before that the existing term of 21 year lease expired. Alright, so 
Before this, the existing term lease expired, the tenant wishes to surrender. So the tenant wishes to surrender this two years unexpired term in return to grant a new lease which for the 15 years with the fire rent review of the every five years. Okay, so at this case study example, so we have to calculate what would be the rent for a new lease which is acceptable by both landlord and tenant by the surrender the existing unexpired lease which is still two years unexpired to go for the existing lease of the 21 year lease all right in return for the a new lease for the 15 years with five year reviews every five years so we look at the suggested working answer so the formula to determine what will be the rent for the new lease will be using the equation of the present interest equal to the proposed interest the first calculation that we need to calculate or we need to derive the value is about the minimum rent that the landlord requires for a new lease okay and then the second calculation is about the maximum rent that the tenant could afford to pay for a new lease. Okay, now we look on the working answer. Okay, so the first question, the, the first calculation that we need to derive is, we need to value is a calculation of a minimum rent that landlord requires for the first five years to next review on a new lease when we look on this working diagram all right okay as we know that the existing 21 year lease all right will be expired soon which is there are still remaining two years to go before the tenancy ended here all right the 19 years expired term already 19 years already expired so they, they still have the two years remaining to go before the existing 21 year lease expired all right for these two years unexpired term the landlord is receiving will be receiving 15,000 per annum all right will be receiving 15,000 per annum for the next two years of the unexpired term. Alright. And then, after the expired term uh, ended, well, after the existing 21 year lease ended, alright, the property will be returned to the landlord, alright, at the market value of the 30,000 per annum. However, this 30,000 per annum market value of the rent only can be granted or obtained by the landlord after two years, which is after the two years unexpired term ended of this existing 21 year lease. All right, okay, and then if all right, if the landlord all right prepare and agree to grant the new lease of the Propose 15 years new lease to the tenants. All right, all right, okay. And then due to that, if the if the landlord agree, all right, agree and prepare to to grant a proposed 15 years new lease, that means that the two years unexpired term here will be surrendered to the landlord. Will be surrendered by the tenant to the landlord. All right, and then. The starting commencement of the proposed new lease will be start from here. Alright, will be start from this date of valuation, which is from this date of valuation there is still has another two years unexpired term for the existing 21 year lease. Alright, but this is going to be the commencement of the proposed 15 years of new lease term. Alright, okay. So Due to that, how we work up on the what will be the new rent that the landlord requires for the first five years to the next review. So, this proposed 15 years new lease has a five-year 
review for every fire they have a review so for the first fire review we already know that the market rent of the similar type of property is a 30,000 however for until the next review of the proposed years of the uh, proposed 15 years new lease okay up to the next review all right the tenant only can uh, enjoy this 30,000 however this 30,000 only can be granted enjoyed by the tenant after five years all right under the new lease under the new lease this 30,000 only can be enjoyed only can be granted by the landlord after five years however for the existing lease all right this 30,000 of the market value can be granted can be enjoyed can be obtained by the landlord after two years all right so now we have to look on the what would be the next new rent that the landlord could agree could accept for the next uh, 15 years new lease with the five year review when we look at here all right so we only value for the next first five years and then we still have another 10 year to go all right 10 year to go is not be calculated under this working answer all right so when we go to the calculations of the uh what will be the next uh, new rents for the new proposed 15 year lease specifically on the first five years to the next review all right okay we look on the equation of the landlord's present interest to the landlord proposed interest first we have to work up on what will be the value of the landlord present interest okay so the landlord's pre uh, present interest valuation is can be referred in the working answer at the bottom here which is the landlord present interest for the term two years and expired which is the landlord received 15,000 per annum for the next two years all right all right so for the next two years landlord will be receiving 15,000 okay the value of this uh, term of unexpired of two years is 27,000 based on the capitalization of the YP two years at 7% and then we work up on the reversions value so the reversion to the market value which is reversion to the market value of the 30,000 to the landlord only can happen after two years which is after the existing tenancy ended for the present interest so the market rent for the similar type of property is this a 30,000 per annum and then we capitalize this uh, market rent into value by the YP perpetuity because this is a landlord when we return the property to the landlord this is going to be the return to the landlord at a perpetuity because landlord is the owner of the property all right so 30 percent or 30,000 capitalized by the YP perpetuity however this uh, 30,000 only can be granted only can be enjoyed only can be obtained by the landlord after two years so based on this calculation so we have this uh, reversionary value about the three hundred thousand and seventy four all right so the capital value of the present interest of the landlord is the sum up of the value of the term and the value of the reversion is about the four hundred thousand so this is a four hundred thousand of the landlord's present interest and then we go to the uh, calculation and valuation of the landlord's proposed interest so so this is the working answer for the landlord proposed interest all right for the proposed interest means is the for the proposed new lease 
However, for our calculation here, we only calculate for the proposed five years to the next review of the new list. So, first five years to the new list. Alright, for the first five years to the new list, which is the, the color pink here, alright, the landlord will be received will be receiving at x we don't know yet we are going to find out what will be the value of the rent of the new lease of the five years so we don't know what will be the value here so why we put the here x x is the the value that we need to calculate that we need to derive here we need to find out here so we capitalize of this future rent receivable for the next five years to the next review by the YP five years. Why five years? Because of the first five years to the next review. First five years to the next review. To the next review. So this is the YP five years. So we have this is the amount of the term value of the uh, proposed interest of the landlord for the new lease based on the first five years to the next review. Okay, and then we go to the calculation of the reversions. The reversion to the market value for the new lease, for the new lease of the proposed 15 years new lease, only can happen after 5 years. Alright, after 5 years. Because of this 30,000 market value is the value of the rent for until the next review. Because beyond the beyond after the after the next review the the amount of the rental value could be different but up to the next rent review the market rent of the similar type of the property is 30000 all right so so the market rent of the property for the proposed 5 years to rent review is a 30000 so this property only can be written to the written to the revert eh, will be revert to the uh, owner only can happen by after five years all right after five years under the new lease or proposed with the new lease of the lease term all right so under the new lease arrangement these thirty thousand only can be written only can be grant, only can be obtained by the landlord after five years. This is a different from the present. From the present, the market rent, all right, of the thirty thousand can be written, can be granted, can be received by the landlord after two years under the present interest or under the existing twenty-one year lease. But for the proposed, because of the arrangement that they did, all right, before in the questions, so the first five years to the next review is five years deferred to the market value to the land lot or to the owner of the property. So thirty thousand, all right, thirty thousand market rent will be revert back to the landlord in perpetuity. However, they will be deferred five years, and that this is the amount of the reversionary value, which is about the three hundred thousand. So, the capital value of the proposed interest is here. So, by using the equation of the landlord present interest and the landlord proposed interest, we uh, can determine what will be the value of the x. X here is the value of the new rent under the new lease of the five years to the review and this x of 23,000 per annum is the amount the minimum amount of rent that the landlord require, requires for the first five years to the next review on new lease so Therefore, the landlord requires a minimum rent of RM23,000 for the first five years to new re next review of a new rent. Okay, 
And then we go to the second calculation of the tenants. All right. For this uh, second calculation, the calculation of the maximum rent that the tenant could afford to pay or the maximum rent that the tenant is willing to pay for the first five years to next review on new lease. Okay. Based on the working diagram here, all right, okay, for the, land, for the tenant's perspective, for the tenant's view, all right, okay, the tenants, okay, under the existing 21-year lease, the tenant knows that they still have the remaining two unexpired years term for the existing. For these two years unexpired term, the tenant pay 15000 per annum, okay, for the next two years. And then the tenant fully aware that the market rent for this type of property is 30000 per annum, all right. So, but the tenant proposed to surrender these two, uh, two years of the unspired term. So the ten, the tenant want to surrender. So they want to give up. So they want to, they want to, they give up these two years unexpired term. But in return, he requests for the pros, pros, proposed 15 years new lease with the five year rent review. So for the first five year review, the Market rent of the similar type of property is still 30,000 per annum. Alright, so when we look at this new arrangement of the proposed 15 years compared to the existing 21 year lease term, which is still got the unexpired term of the two years unexpired term, alright, for the new lease, we can see that here the tenant has to give up these two years. In return, he has to establish or he has to. Uh, entered into the new lease of the 15 years with the fire review. So the first review of the fire, the, the for the first review, the market rent is a uh, 30,000 per annum. All right. So and then for this type of the property, so we want to know what would be the rent that the 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 tenant would be willing to pay. At the beginning of the tenancy for the next first prior to the rent review until the tenancy for, for the next uh, next review up to the remaining of the proposed 15 years new lease which is a uh, another 10 years to go all right okay so we go to the calculation of the equation of the tenants present interest to the Tenants' proposed interest. So this calculation is be using to determine what will be the value of the new rent, okay? That the tenant is willing to pay. So this x represent the new rent that the tenant, the maximum rent that the tenant is willing to pay, okay? So we go to the tenant's present interest. So based on the working answer here. The tenant's present interest is 16,000. So how do you derive this 16,000? It's a based on the tenant's present interest of the two years unexpired term. So for the two years unexpired term, for the existing tenancy, for the present interest, present interest here is represent the existing 21 years lease term, which is the existing tenancy. All right. So the market rent of this type of property is a 30,000. 30,000. Okay. The rent paid by the tenant for the existing tenancy for the next two years until the tenancy ended is 15,000. So the profit rent enjoyed by the land uh, by the tenant is a 15,000 per annum. So for the next two years the tenants have an excess of the profit rent of the 15,000 for the next two years. So, we capitalize of this profit rent, so we get the tenant's present, ten, uh, tenant's present interest of the 16,000 uh, in terms of the value. So, this is why we get the RM 16,000 of the tenant's present interest. So now you will come on the what is the tenant's proposed interest. So the tenant proposed interest is 
based on the what we the proposed 15 new lease terms. However, for our calculation, we only consider for the first five years to the next review due to that the market rents of the similar type of property only can be captured up to the five years to the next review. So we are working on this uh, uh, work, working on this uh, market rent of the 30,000 of the five years to the next review. Okay, so so now we value of the what will be the value of the proposed interest to the tenant. Okay, so we know that the the property the, the market rent of the similar type of property is a 30,000 per annum. Okay, this is a market rent, 30,000. We want to less the rent payable. Rent that the tenant is willing to pay. But we don't know yet what is the value of the rent that the tenant is willing to pay. This is what we were going to work out. So that's why you put X here. Alright, so based on the profit rents here, we going to get this is the the purpose of the capital value of the purpose interest all right and then we do the equation here all right and then we get the value of the x value of the x here is the maximum rent that the tenant could effort to pay or is willing to pay for the next first five years which is about the 23,400. So this is the maximum. Beyond these figures, uh, the, the tenant unwilling to pay. So the, the tenant will only willing to pay of this amount of uh, maximum will be the 23,400 or below. Cannot be exceed this amount. That's why, therefore, the tenant could afford to pay a maximum of RM 23,400 per annum for the first five years to the next review on new list. Okay. The conclusion from this uh, working answer, the calculation can derive to the final decisions. The first that we need to consider for our discussion is that the landlord requires a minimum rent of a RM 23,000 300 per annum. This is a minimum. Lower than this rate, the landlord would, cannot accept. And then the tenant only willing to pay a maximum rent is about the 23,400. This is the amount that the ceiling amount, the maximum that the tenant is willing to pay. So the, there is a two value here. Value that the landlord requests to uh, request for tenant to pay and then the value of the rent that the, uh, the, the, the tenant um, can afford or is willing to pay to the uh, landlord for the new lease. So, the negotiation between the parties will take place. If there is a dis dispute on these two different value of the what is the landlord request and the tenants willing to pay, they always come into a negotiation between the landlord and tenants. But usually, the negotiation will take place with the consideration of the following. The result may be a split at around the RM23,400. This is a, actually, they, they add the these two amount that they, they they add these two amount they sum up these two amount and divide by two and then they get the pro rate between these two amounts divide by two they get this amount the request by the landlord amount that uh, uh, that the tenant willing to pay and then they sum up and they divide into two so they have this uh, arrangement for both uh, to agree upon with the uh, value of the rent or maybe both parties may settle at a figure nearer the landlord's or the tenant's figure, depending on the, upon their negotiating strength and the state of the market. Sometimes, if the market is booming, all right, so negotiation advantage will go to the landlord. But if 
the economy is declining, the negotiation strength will be uh, uh, advantage to the tenant. So, whatever the, the figure, the, the, the nearest or the, the final figure of the new rents will be depend on many things, many uh, factors to consider. This is on the market because market strength is also sometimes considered on the demand and the supply. Thank you for watching.